Uh, hello again, you guys. It's been a while. I just got done watching the new Netflix series called The Witcher. I thought I'd uh, share my thoughts on it with you. Uh, what did I think about this show? Uh, if I was to rate it out of 10, I don't know, I'd probably give it a solid 8 out of 10. I thought this was a really good show, a really great show even. Uh, first episode, uh, a bit slow, uh, you know, it has to build up a lot of what the hell's going on, and throughout a lot of the show, one of my big problems with it, I'll just, I'll list some of my problems with it since I'm mostly in favor of this show, and uh, I think it's more fun to talk about the flaws of something, you know, rather than, you know, the positives right away, but we'll get to them because there's a lot more positives than negatives. But the, the negatives and the stuff that I'd like to see improved for the next seasons, seasons going forward, because obviously there's going to be at least five or something, I assume. Something that I really want them to improve on are the characters. Now, I like the characters that we got going for them. However, something that I realized at like uh, during episode seven, probably which is probably my least favorite episode because uh, they do this flashback thing again, which really worked wonderfully in episode four because there's a point in episode four where I suddenly realized, wait a minute, th this is a flashback because these characters in this episode are dead or they died in episode one, but now they're alive again. I mean, that's it's really cool the way they did that, but when they do it again in episode seven, it, it felt kind of tired. It felt kind of, you know, we've been there. We've done that already. You kind of wore out that surprise. But it worked wonderfully the first time they did in episode four. And episode four might be my favorite episode because I really, the scene that sticks with me is the scene with the uh, hedgehog guy and uh, blonde lady. Uh, sort of uh, that whole scene in the, the banquet hall or, or whatever during the, the wedding the two weddings technically was a really nice scene, probably the best scene in the series. I mean, I'd I'd have to go back rewatch some of it. To, it's it's hard to process some of it. I mean, <laughs> my mind even making this video. I like making videos like this where I just get to talk with you guys, uh, just shoot the shit, talk about it. You know, I I don't like to structure videos like these anymore. I think it's just a waste of time. I'd rather just talk about something with you rather than you know, write out a script like, oh, Henry Cavill gives a Emmy-worthy performance as Geralt of Rivia. I mean, <laughs> if you want some other schmuck to read off a shitty review to you, you know, well-worded, intricate plot summaries and all this gobbledygook, I mean, go for that. Th this is just my thoughts. Uh, but again, let, let's talk about the negatives, though. Let's stick with that. Biggest negative are the characters. Like I said, I like these characters, but the problem I realized when I looked at IMDb is that I don't remember any of these characters' names, apart from the main three uh, cast of characters here. For instance, we got Geralt of Rivia, Ciri, and Yennefer. Those are literally the only three characters that I knew like by their name. I didn't know any one of these other guys. I didn't know... Uh, Fring, Fringilla? That's like this. That's the fourth one listed. Uh, Kyer, 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 uh, Tis, Tisaya, Dara. I knew that guy because he was uh, the travel companion to uh, Siri for a bit. <laughs> Mouse Sack. Who the hell was Mouse Sack? Jasker. Okay, he was the. Uh, the bard, the bard, the mu the musician guy. At first, I was annoyed by his character. Like I think you're supposed to be annoyed by his character, obviously. But I grew to like his character a lot. So there, uh, and Stragabor, like he's sort of built up to be the the main antagonist, and uh, you know, it's it's a fine cast, good cast of characters they got. I really think going forward they can improve on them and this is something where I think Game of Thrones could teach them well 
And the lesson I hope they learn going forward is that you got to treat your villains as if they're the protagonist sometimes. Now, what I liked about, especially the first half of Game of Thrones, is that they had villains like Tywin. They had villains like Ramsay and Roose Bolton. They had uh, e even uh, Walder Frey. I mean, like Joffrey. All these, all these bad guys, they got their own segments. You know, they, they had, and Littlefinger especially, they had personalized segments you know they had their own sub stories or side stories or just stories in general that would connect to the to the plot itself and they weren't treated as bad guys they were just doing their thing they were just going through the motions just like our heroes would just like the characters we would root for would and i really grew to love that about that show and that's why the last two seasons of Game of Thrones did not work at all. I mean when you look back at the last two seasons, who the hell were the villains of that season? Honestly, <laughs> like who were those villains that we were rooting against? Uh, Cersei? Like most of the time she was hardly played as a villain. What, the the White Walkers? They were proven to be a non threat by season eight, halfway through it. Uh who else we got? We got that pirate schmuck, whatever the hell his name is, I can't even remember now. That's how forgettable his character is. Wait, you're on, I remember. Wow, I even remember that shitty character's name. But I can't remember any of the side characters from this show because obviously we haven't had enough time to grow with them yet. This is only one season, eight episodes. They have a lot of stuff to go through. Uh, so that that would be my first negative. Second negative would be that some of the dialogue here has a tendency to really use a lot of the same words over and over again. And the word I want to use and a word that I do not want to hear as much of from this series going forward is the word destiny. I must have heard the word destiny like for at least the amount of times they said destiny in this series of eight episodes, it must have at least been a half of an episode's length. I'm talking a half hour of time where characters are literally just saying, over and over and over again the word destiny give it up guys come on stop saying the word going forward please i know you're gonna have to say it eventually but say it at a point where you have to say it there's a way to tell your story visually you don't have to always say the word we get it Fate and destiny, fate and destiny, we got it. Now enough of that. Now save that word if you, because obviously you're going to have to use it again in your script, but use it when it fucking matters. I'm so sick of hearing that word. That word got on my nerves. It was, it was like one of those poltergeist movies. I can't remember which one. It's one of the shitty sequels, obviously. It's not the first one. But in one of the sequels, they're running around yelling, Carol Ann! Carol Ann! Carol Ann! And it got so annoying. Like, <laughs> like you just start laughing. You know, when, when, you, when you hear something repeated over and over and over and over and over again, you can't help but stop taking the material seriously at that point. Because, you know, it... It's like, do, do you not realize from a scripting standpoint that this is getting redundant to the fact that it's, it's getting tiresome? Like, hearing this word over and over again, it would just make me roll my fucking eyes into the back of my head. It's like, are you serious? Can we give up this shit already? Just like I got to give up this whole tirade about the word destiny. All right, we're done with that. What's another problem? I had with this show. Uh, something else that I'd mentioned probably would be the score. I mean, I, I'm i not a big fan of it. I, I don't know what it is, but it just sounds so... 
like generic to me. I mean, it, there's nothing really impactful about it. The the main theme sort of sounds like a temp score, you know, like a first draft of a score where it's just like first draft, first draft of a score where it's like they, they just plug in all the basic elements that they want to hear. I really hope they ramp it up in the next seasons going forward because it's a really weak score and I feel like they could do a much better job with it. I mean, maybe it comes directly from the games. I don't know. Like, I've never played the games or, or anything like that. Now I want to go play the games after watching this show because all the lore and whatnot fascinate me. I'd love to learn more about it. Um, so, yeah, that that's another problem. I'm trying to think if I had any other problems because, like, I had very few problems with the show, but I wanted to get them off my chest first and then jump onto the positives that I had because the positives far outweigh the negatives. Mm. Yeah, like, uh, other than the fact that I'd like to see these villains developed more, I mean, the these villains, uh, like this Sire, Kai, Kair, 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 whatever the hell his name is, I mean, I don't, I don't know what the hell the guy's name is, they, they kept saying uh, Nilfgaard, that was another word that got old after a while, Nilfgaard, Nilfgaard, Nilfgaard. Oh, man, like all these w repeated words. I mean, it's just, oh, cut it out, guys. Come on, we get it. Tell us, tell us these characters' names for fuck's sakes. Because the fact that I only remembered three of these characters' names for obvious reasons, because we're following these three characters. But I hope going forward, we can follow more characters. Like, I want to know what this Stregobor guys up to you know i'd like to see an episode center around uh jasker like the the bard guy like go on a random adventure with him where he doesn't bump into Geralt or Ger Geralt. yeah yeah I, <laughs> I would often go back and forth i'd be like is it gerald or Geralt? Geralt, i guess uh yeah just and uh fringilla i mean like uh if I'm pronouncing that name right, Fringilla, I mean, she, she's, uh, she's the black mage that's working for, uh, the Nilfgaard or Milfgaard or whatever the hell it's called. But I, I thought she was the most compelling of the villains. I mean, and the closest I got to really, uh, like, sympathizing with these villains or caring about them or however you want to put it, was there's a scene with, uh, this uh, king guy for the Nilfgaard. I'm not even going to try to pronounce his name anymore. Kair, Ka, Ka Ir. I just contradicted myself right away there. But a uh, villain guy, let's call him. Black haired villain guy. Uh, at one point, he hires a shapeshifter to grab Siri out of the forest of whatever. And. Uh, you know, the, the shapeshifter guy tricks him into thinking, you know, oh, this is Siri, I got her, you know, and uh, then he turns into him, and then they get into this fight scene, and uh, I ended up rooting for the real guy, because at that point in the story, he hadn't really done anything that bad to me. I mean, I think he was the guy to to shoot the arrow at the, the king, like shoot the king in the eye or whatever. But we don't see that for sure. We just see him at a distance. We see this guy with an arrow on a horse. We don't get a close-up as far as I know. I can't remember. It's all the way in episode one. But I don't think we got a close-up on who shot that arrow exactly. But, uh, yeah, I, I liked what they were doing with him. It's just I, I wish we had more scenes with him. And we, we get that scene with... Uh, Yennefer's old flame. I forget that schmuck's name. Uh, but he he's sort of breaking down why the Nilfgaard aren't that bad, like in how they treat their uh, citizens. You know, they they provide them with with work and with uh, with food and resources, shelter, etc. 
And that was the closest we got to like a Game of Thrones type thing where it's like, okay, we get to see these villains as not villains. You know, we get to see them, you know, in a society where we can understand why they do these bad things, just like we can understand why the heroes do, why the heroes do bad things, you know? So there's more of a gray area. In this show, it's more like black and white in a sense. There's still a middle ground there, but mostly it's black and white. Like any sense of like, of, of evil we might initially get from, from Gerald, Geralt, Geralt is immediately undercut with him doing a act of good. Like say for instance, he kills the girl in the first episode, but then he defends her body because he doesn't want that piece of shit uh, Stragabor uh, doing an autopsy and experimenting on her, disgusting stuff like that, vile character. Uh, but yeah, we, at least going forward, we got a good cast, we got a good set of characters, we got the world built up to us, we got this destiny crap out of the way, so we get to focus on, okay, action, 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 let's show, let's not do as much telling. Let's show from here on out. And that's where this show really excels. The middle chunk of this show, I'd say episodes three to six, are really, really wonderful, wonderful television. I mean, I, I was getting this sort of... Uh, for some reason, I, I was thinking of the show Sherlock. There was an episode in Sherlock that I think is the best episode. It's called uh, The Hounds of Baskerville. And it's this episode where uh, Sherlock is just after this werewolf in Baskerville or whatever. And it's a standalone story. And most of the stories in or most of the episodes in that series do stand alone. But most of them are taking place in England, so most of them have, like, a connective tissue to the past one. But what I liked about that episode, and why it makes it my favorite, and why I like these middle chapters of The Witcher, are because these episodes, they, they kind of stand alone, and they're, they're sort of uh, awesome uh, adventures, you know? One's a dragon hunt, and another is a episode where Geralt has to save a a monster you know initially you're thinking especially at the start of the episode where you see the the witcher guy get killed by this monster you're thinking oh, okay Geralt's gonna have to come in and obviously kill this monster but no he ends up having or not having to but he wants to save this monster because uh he has a heart he has a soul and you and you quickly start to learn that throughout the series. I mean, it's it's kind of obvious from the get-go, but I think Henry Cavill, he he really makes this material work. I, I don't see this character working in the hands of another actor. Like, I think this is Henry's best work to date. I think he's really wonderful here. I think he deserves a lot of awards, award recognition for this show. I think he's really phenomenal here. And it's not just because he's jacked. I mean, the, the fact that he put the effort into the physicality as much as he did the, the vocal performance, uh, the, the emotional side of, of Geralt, he, he really nails this character. And the, these three leads in particular, uh, Freya Allen as Siri and uh, Ayana Sh Sh Shalotra... <laughs> Ayana Shalotra as a uh, Siri and Yennefer, respectively. I mean, uh, the these actresses and actors, they're they're all really wonderful in this show. And I think going forward, I mean, I I sort of had this prediction in my head when I first got excited for the show based off the announcement and the first images and the trailers and stuff. I had this feeling that, you know, I was probably going to be mixed on this series, like. I had a feeling I wasn't going to love it, but I was at least going to respect it and at least want to stick around for when they progress it moving forward. But 
I was really pleasantly surprised by this season. It was not as much of a mess as I thought it would be. Rotten Tomatoes, I think the critics on there are way off base, some of them. I saw, I saw two uh, grade F scores for this show, and I was just... Like, after I watched the first four episodes, I was just going, What? A fucking F? Are you serious? What? <laughs> like, it's it's ridiculous. Some of the reactions this has got. I literally read in one review, the, the one F review that I read, the guy watched episode one, and then he bluntly admitted that he skipped... <laughs> he skipped all the way to episode five, and was complaining about this orgy scene that ended up being one of the funniest scenes in in the show, in my opinion. But th this guy is such a schmuck. I mean, these guys who review this show that low obviously did not give it a fucking a chance from the get go. They already made up their minds about it. <laughs> like fuck, fuck these critics. I mean, the these guys are hacks. I hate critics like that. You know that that are so delusional. They think, oh, I'm right, and people are going to buy my opinion. Well, it's got an 8.8 out of 10 on IMDb, so I guess you fucking drop the ball, whatever your schmuck name is. I'm not even going to look you up, you, you fucking idiot. Man, oh man, so, some of those reviews were just completely delusional, completely wrong-headed, just made me laugh. And makes me laugh even harder just just thinking about it because this is a really good start to a series. And I am amazed that it worked as well as it did because, like I said, I thought initially that this was going to be like a 6 out of 10 at best. Maybe 7 out of 10. And at, at points I was getting worried. I'm like, oh no, it's, it's kind of dropping into like generic territory here. But I can forgive that because there's so much energy there's so much commitment from these actors and from like the costume design like everything about this show i mean it just there's a heart and there's a soul to this show and as generic and as predictable as it may be at some points i was even like predicting lines of dialogue like <laughs> ahead of time like they're like in the episode having to do with the uh, the monster princess and the and the crypts and stuff, there's this character. Uh, I think her name is Triss. Yeah, Triss. She pops up uh, in the last episode or the last two episodes again. But she's in that episode with with Geralt. And uh, there's a point where they're searching around a room for something, and she's checking out this like piano music box thing. And there was a voice in the back of my head that was going, she's going to call out Gerald or Gerald. She's going to go like, Gerald, get over here or something like that. And I was just playing it in my mind. I'm like, it's coming now. It's coming now. And there's this like 10 seconds of it where I was like, they're not going to do it. They're not going to do it. Are they? Are they going to do it or are they not? And then after that 10 seconds of me going, yes, they're not going to do it. Guess what? Gerald. Oh no! They, so it's it's a lot of you know generic, uh, trope ridden writing, you know. But that can be forgiven because th this is admittedly a, or at least to me, it seems like a very tough genre to write for. I mean, and if you want the worst example of how terrible and rushed this genre can be look at especially the last season of game of thrones in particular just that last episode it's just filled with boring 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 drama like just and scenes of characters walking it's the most boring thing ever i take i take trope ridden cliched fantasy elements any day over something that's outright fucking boring like that abysmal last episode of Game of Thrones. That that's honestly why like and I I started doing reviews of Game of Thrones. Of course I can't help but talk about that show when I'm talking about The Witcher. And and it's an obvious comparison, right? I mean, following that abysmal last season, we get a show like this. 
that I I honestly think people were th- were thinking at first like they were kind of weary about this show at first, and I and I don't blame them because I I was kind of skeptical. I mean, I was like, you know, I'll, I'll watch it for Henry Cavill, and it looks like it's got some fun action to it, blah blah blah. But really, what I walked away from with this show is that I'm just really excited for the future of it. I I really loved the fact that we're left with this sense of anticipation for the next season. I'm happy that they didn't neatly wrap up everything in a bow. Like, I thought the last episode was going to be a lot more rushed than it was. The last episode was kind of a rushed job, in my opinion. It felt like, like, oh, we, we got to quickly uh, do this. We got to do this battle. And, and we got we to gotta have Geralt uh, finally uh, find Siri. blah, blah, blah. But I, I thought it worked well because they didn't neatly wrap up everything. You know, it wasn't like Geralt finds Siri and then right away it's like, oh, we got to go get Yennefer now. Oh, we got to have the three of us meet. It's like, no, that's going to be in the next season. Because this season, literally, right from the get-go, the setup is Geralt has to find Siri. And the last scene in the show really, it kind of got to me. Like, the the scene where, you know, like, we, we get a flashback to the first episode where the girl tells him the the girl in the forest is your destiny. I like there's a point where they played that again and then you see Geralt's reaction and then he runs into the forest and that that's that's part of the score that I liked. So that part of the score swept me up in the drama of the scene. I was on the edge of my seat just hoping, praying. I'm like, "Please let something good happen here for this girl because like she's so uh, lost and troubled at this point. She can't even, hey Audrey, she can't even stick around with this loving woman that clearly wants to to take care of her, you know, and wants to treat her like a daughter, but she, she just can't stick around. She she just, just got to keep running, even though she knows she's going nowhere with it. And that, that was a wonderful way to end... Uh, this season and it left on a good cliffhanger too like where who who's Yennefer I mean I, I like that question and I like the reaction and I like the sudden like this is the end perfect all right now you got me excited for the next season and I really can't wait and that's another thing I love about this show the relationship between Geralt and Yennefer I thought was surprisingly really sweet I mean like there there's a lot of sexual chemistry at first with these two uh, they're both attractive actors for sure, but it was really surprising to me how much I really cared about these two and how much like it, it kind of broke my heart to see them uh, turn against one another, you know, like uh, over the over the again, the whole destiny thing. I mean, but I, I really I really liked what they did there like I I really liked their relationship and I I thought it worked really well and I hope that in the next season we get to spend more time just focusing on these characters and their relationships you know because I I didn't even I didn't even much care about the action in this like I liked the action a lot like, especially where uh, in episode four, Geralt, like, uh, decides to defend Hedgehog guy. You know, that's such an exciting scene. And that's what makes him such a uh, rootable character. Like, you really want to root for Geralt because he's always defending uh, these creatures that, you know, others are just right away. Like the queen in that episode, she's just like, fuck you. <laughs> like, tries to, tries to kill him twice. Like, that scared the shit out of me when she... When she, like, uh, tried to shank him when she's at his ear, and she's like, now you die! Ah! <laughs> why, why do all these villains, like, why why do they have to announce the, the fact that they're going to... Well, she's not a villain, technically, but why, why do they always have to <laughs> proclaim that I'm going to kill you now? Ah! <laughs> why do they have to do that? Um, there, there's another stupid moment where... Uh, uh, Siri and uh, what's his name Dara <laughs> I wanted to call him Dora there for a second 
where Siri and Dara, they, they somehow uh, subdue the shapeshifter guy, which I was really confused about. I'm like, how is this guy like that weak that he gets taken down by two kids? That's so pathetic. And then he's able to take on uh, the the Nilfgaard uh, black-haired bad guy. I'm not pronouncing that fucking name. Even though it's only five letters, I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, he, even though he can take on that guy, he can't take on two kids and they damn near kill him? <laughs> wow, way, way to make your uh, lead villain, if he is a lead villain. I don't know if he's like a staying presence in the series or not. He might get killed off in the first episode of season two for all I fucking know. I mean, the the black mage of Frigilla, Fring, Fringilla, Godzilla, Fringilla, <laughs> however the hell her name is pronounced. I mean, she's more of a presence than he is, for fuck's sakes. And, uh, like, yeah, that, that moment with the shapeshifter, though, where, where the kids are... Where Siri, for some reason, tells Dara, like, don't, don't kill the shapeshifter. I was like, wait, why? What? What are you talking about? Don't kill the shapeshifter. Are you fucking stupid? Look at him. He's, he's, looks like fucking Nosferatu. You're telling me not to kill this guy? Are you serious? What the fuck was that decision? And then he just slaps the blade away, uh, like, and, and, or knocks Dara out. And then, uh, she gets caught. And then he does that whole, like, trick -a -roo. Oh, I'm not Siri. I'm, I'm the shapeshifter. I got the actual information out of who this girl is out of you. Like, oh, my God. It's just, it's, there, there are a lot of really dumb things in this show. But thankfully, this show has enough of a, uh, of a backbone and enough intelligence to understand that hey some of this material is obviously very uh cheesy and they play it well i mean like i mentioned earlier there there's like an orgy scene that's so over the top that right away i was just i was shaking my head going like i'm i'm like you can't be serious here okay whatever but in the context of the scene, it makes sense. And once once you get the reveal, once she snaps the fingers and the spell is broken and you get, oh, like, all these people going, ah, <laughs> like, covering up and shit, it, it works surprisingly well. I mean, I, I got a lot of laughs out of this show. Like, uh, the, the stuff to do with the dwarves, I mean, like, they're, like, that, that, between that dragon episode and I, I don't know, it's like... It's one of the middle episodes, like I said, between three and six are easily my favorite episodes. So what is that, like three, four, five, six? That's like half the season. That's just really wonderful, excellent fucking, just excellent stuff. And the, the first two episodes and the last two episodes, really good, but I have a lot of problems with them. Like I said, in episode seven, is probably the worst episode, but it's definitely not that bad. It's just the big problem is they rely on a lot of flashbacks and they already played their hand in episode four with the flashback scene with the whole, oh, wow, this is this is in this timeline now. OK, in episode seven, though, it's like we're sort of left on a mountain uh, with Geralt. And he's just sort of staring at the uh, Nilfgaard walking. And then all of a sudden we cut to uh, literally the, the first episode, but from his perspective. And, and a lot of the scenes, like about five minutes of the episode, is dedicated to literal scenes that we have already seen. So it's just like, oh, God, man, you couldn't have done this in a more, like condensed way like I would have just preferred this to be one episode as opposed to like no we're gonna do the reveal of this now like it just it just felt kind of needless to me so anyhow again I, I'm gonna leave my thoughts there like I I know it sounded like I had a lot of a lot more negatives than positives with this show but trust me when I say, like, th this show, af after the disappointment that was Game of Thrones and the, the lack of fun that I had with that show and how it ended, the, the absolute disgusting betrayal that D&D &D did with that last season, the, 
the outright abysmal, just abysmal writing of that last season just left a bad taste in my mouth. Let, let me really down, let me down so hard after the utter devastating disappointment of that last season of Game of Thrones, this was a wonderful experience. Like, th this was a really... <laughs> I, I had a lot of fun with this show, you guys. Like, and I, I think you will as well. Uh, I, I don't understand how people could outright hate this show. I understand there's a lot of tropes to it. There's a lot of cliches. There's a lot of predictability to it, whatever. But once you get past that, and and trust me, like I, I know the first episode might be a bit slow. It starts off really cool cool with like that spider monster and like the, the black eyed witcher. I really love that look. He looks so cool like that. Uh but yeah, it, aside from kind of a an admittedly slow start and kind of a and not not spectacular ending, but a, a decent ending that gets you pumped for the next season. Um, th this was just a really fun show, a fun, adventurous show, especially the middle section. It, it's very adventurous, very, like, I, I just got this classic adventure feel, you know, like, I, I don't know why, but I was thinking like of, uh, the, the princess bride, but an R rated version of princess bride throughout and like all these classic adventure films. And it, it just, it just had this fun swashbuckling vibe to it especially with Henry Cavill in the lead I mean he really steals the show here every time he's not on screen at, at least most of the time I was like oh I, I really hope he comes back soon but thankfully he's in about like 70 to 80 percent of of this series like he is the lead here it's not like a Game of Thrones thing where it's like they they cast so and so as the lead and they're in it for about like 20% of the, the season because they got to focus on so many other characters. You know, that, that would be the only drawback if they do do uh, my, suggestion, my suggestion of a Game of Thrones type thing where they focus on like the villains just as much as they do our leading hero characters. I, I really think that would elevate these next seasons more than this one and I really think more people would be on board if they did something like that with these villainous characters because I don't want to look at them as just you know some villain to get killed off you know I, I really don't want to look at these characters just like generic fantasy 101 you know what I mean like I, I want there to be something more to the show and I, f I feel like Game of Thrones, the first half of that series, really showed us how you do fantasy stuff like really well, you know, especially from a character standpoint. I think that, sh that those first three to four seasons really excelled in the characters and uh, this show can learn a lot from that. And this is a really good start. Again, this is an 8 out of 10 for me. I'd highly recommend it to, to anybody who's a fan of this genre. And, uh, hey, what what do you think about it, Audrey? Did, did you like this show, girl? Did you like this show? Hmm. Say hi to the camera, girl. Mug to the camera. Subscribe. Follow me on Patreon. Send me your money. Or, I mean, uh, se send her your money. Send her your money. Audrey, Audrey needs to be neutered, so uh, se send your money. <laughs> All right, you guys. Uh, I'm just kidding about the neutering part. Hey, ignore that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna totally edit this part out of the video, just like how she's about to bonk into the camera now. Oh no, she's sniffing it now. Oh, what's gonna happen? I'm gonna turn it off now before I make an even bigger fool of myself. All right, thanks for listening, you guys. And uh, I got to grab this before she takes it off the table here. Thanks for listening. Check out The Witcher. I think you guys will love it. Make sure uh, we get many more seasons of this going forward. And uh, I'll see you on the next video. For the next video, I, I think I might do a Star Wars video because uh, I've, I figured I might as well watch the movie. I've heard enough about it to where, you know, I've had it spoiled for me already, the damn movie. 
So, uh, we'll see how I feel about it. Because I didn't want to pull a Last Jedi and see it opening day or night. And then be utterly disappointed by it. Like, that, that feeling... And I'm going off topic here. It's no longer The Witcher. But that feeling of The Last Jedi... And I was talking with my neighbor about this the other day. That empty, hollow feeling I got from walking out of The Last Jedi after I first saw it. I will never have that experience in a theater again. And if I do, I will want to shoot whoever the fuck uh, does it. You know, whether it be Disney or Ryan Johnson, who whoever's responsible for making me feel that way again. I mean, fuck those people responsible. And I will never get that again, especially from a fucking Star Wars movie. I will never get hyped. That movie, if there's one good thing about that Last Jedi movie, it's that it'll never get me hyped for another movie ever again. Unless it's something... Like from like a Christopher Nolan or something, because at least I can count on that guy to even if I don't really love the movie, at least I respect what he does. And I see all of his choices from his perspective and go, oh, I see why he did that. Anyhow, <laughs> enough of that shit. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for listening, you guys. Take care.